<laughs> Keep your Bibles open. Um, we're going to walk through this uh, entire chapter. So uh, I just want to encourage you uh, this morning as we uh, are halfway through the year, and um, we want to hear from God. So I just want to read this text and let the text speak to us this morning so we can hear from God and be who God would have us to be. Now, let me, let me, let me say this to you, um, and tell me what you process, what you hear when I make this statement. My goal in life is to be like Christ not so much do for Christ. I want you to process that for a little while. My goal is to be like him, not so much to do for him. The challenge with the statement is for me to be like him, I must be willing to do for him. You kind of get what I'm saying? But the goal is not doing, it's being. Does that make sense? Yeah. And while I'm on road to becoming like him, I must do for him. That's very, very important that we not miss that because here's the problem with, with doing without becoming like him is we think it's about us. Come on, amen. We want personal gain. We want personal glory. We want personal praise. And then we make the mistake of glorying in our accomplishments. The flesh starts to feel good. Come on, y'all say Amen. The flesh start to whatever, and then if somebody doesn't praise the flesh, we get upset with them, we get mad with them. Does this make sense? And we start missing everything. So that's why I want you not to miss the fact that the goal in my Christian journey is not so much to do, it is to become like. I want to become like Christ. Come on, repeat out of me. Say, I want to become like Christ. Everybody else say it again. Say, I want to become like Christ. Yeah. Paul in this uh, third chapter of the book of Philippians, and I'm going to be moving through the whole thing, he kind of encourages the believers of Christ in what it means to not so much glory in worldly accomplishment, but then not to get tired in the press to becoming who God would have us to be. My problem is because I let the flesh get in the way, I can get discouraged along the way when I miss the mark when I miss what this is all about, when I miss what God has called me to become, and then when the flesh doesn't get what the flesh is hoping to, to receive or, or get, we kind of become discouraged and we start missing the mark. So Paul writes now this, this third chapter to the church at Philippi in hope of encouraging them, in hope of getting them to be where God would have them to be. So notice how he opens up by saying, Finally, my brothers, he says, Rejoice in the Lord, in verse 1, to write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Okay, let me read that one more time. Finally, my brothers, he says, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble for me and it is safe for you. So he's trying to encourage his church at Philippi. Now notice what he goes on to say. Let me read this and then we're going to work through it a little bit. If you're in verse uh, 2, say amen. I need to know everybody's there. And now keep your Bibles open because I'm going to keep pointing you to it. I am in the ESV. Whatever translation you have will work just fine. Verse 2 says, look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. Then verse 3 says, for we are the circumcision ascision, who worship by the Spirit of God and who glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, he says, I have more. And then uh, he goes on and he lays out his credential. And I'm going to take a moment to kind of talk about on why he should brag, why he should boast. But then he tells us what he chooses not to do. So I want to share, I want to share four things with you. I want to talk about um, the problem that exists in the church of Philippi and the problem that could potentially exist in our churches today in popular culture. I want to talk about the goal that we ought to be pressing for, okay, as it relates to the problem. I want to talk about the caution that we ought to exercise, and then I want to encourage you not to give up. Does that make sense? Are you hearing me? Come on, say the problem. problem. Say the goal. goal. Say the caution. caution. And then say the exhortation. I want to kind of talk through that a little bit. So let's kind of go to work. So number one, um, here's a problem as we kind of looked about it. It says the believers are cautioned not to put confidence in fleshly 
accomplishments, okay? So as believers, I want you to hear me say this morning, you and I are cautioned not to put flesh, I mean, confidence in fleshly accomplishments. By way of just literary context of what was going on in the text at the time that caused Paul to write this, the Judaizers, say Judaizers, say, Ju- yes. say Judaizers, come on. Now let me explain who these people were. These were Jewish believers that had converted to Christianity and they had put faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But the problem with the Judaizers, not only did they have a salvation by faith, they wanted to attach works to it in that they couldn't release the Old Testament law that said to establish a good relationship with Christ, you also, in addition to your faith, needed to be circumcised. Are you with me? That was the Old Testament rite. That was the ritual that they had. So they had a problem, especially with the church at Philippi or the New Testament church, and people saying salvation by faith alone without any works of the flesh. You kind of hear what I'm saying? So what they were saying is that if you needed to be saved, if you wanted to be saved, it's not as simple as just having faith and believe in God. You need to do something as well. And so they propagated this false gospel that salvation included works, specifically circumcision, because they had to do it. They felt that everyone else needed to do it as well. So Paul writes to Philippi, and then notice how he opens up, back up to verse 2. He says, watch out for dogs, for the dogs, okay? And these are some harsh words that he's using to describe these Judaizers. He's calling them a name that a normal Jew would call a Gentile, okay? You remember in one instance when Jesus was ministering and he went to the Gentile woman and he said, she said, can I have something? And, and uh, he said, no, uh, the meat is reserved for those who sit at the table. And you remember her statement was, even the dogs that are under the table receive the crumbs. Come on, some of y'all know this. And, and, because that's what Gentiles will refer to as. So now Paul is putting the Jews in the same category as these Gentiles by saying, watch out for dogs. And notice what he says, evildoers and those who mutilate the flesh. In other words, people who are trying to fool you into thinking that it takes some sort of worldly activity for you to develop a relationship with Christ. He says, be careful of that. Be careful of that. Come on, say, be careful of works leading to salvation. Y'all repeat out of me. Say that. I I want y'all to get this this morning. So now notice then how Paul now describes himself and how he describes the church at Philippi and the church today, verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ. And then he says, we put no confidence in the flesh. Okay? Now, if you know anything about scriptures, we understand quickly well that circumcision now in the New Testament, it's a spiritual act. It's a circumcision of the heart. It's a cutting away of fleshly things. It's a giving up of fleshly things so we can gain Christ. So he says, if you're a believer in Christ, you need to know this. You are a, uh, uh, he says, we are worshipers. Let me read that again. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God, and we put no confidence in the flesh. Now, Paul lays out his credentials. So here's what he's saying to the Judaizers. If you want to brag, let me tell you who have a right to brag. So notice what he says. He goes on by saying this. Though I myself have reason to put confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, he says, I have more. Then look at the next verse. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel. Now let me tell you what he's doing. He's really, if he wanted to brag, he's saying, I've got reason to brag more than you. Okay, because here's what he wants the Judaizers to understand. The Old Testament law said that any good upstanding Jew on the eighth day of their birth is circumcised to bring them into the right standing with God. So he's saying, don't think that I came into this relationship late like some of y'all who were converted to Judaism. I was born into the thing. Are you? He says, I'm circumcised on the eighth day. And then listen to what he says. Uh, the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, connecting himself all the way back to Abraham to say, I'm not a wannabe. (laughs) 
Uh, He says, I'm pure bread, okay? And then watch what he goes on to say. A Hebrew of Hebrews. In other words, my mama and my daddy have Jewish descent. Some of y'all's mama, you don't even know who she is. Come on now. Some of, he's talking about some of you are half breed. Some of you are not full blood like I am. If you want to brag, he said, let me tell you who can brag. A Hebrew of Hebrews, both parents, he says, a Hebrews of, uh, to the law, he says, of, as to the law, a Pharisee. Now, you need to know what Paul is saying. Yeah, I, don't, don't approach me about the word. I know the word. Matter of fact, I was responsible for interpreting some of the words that you guys are adhering to, okay? Part of the Pharisaic council. And then notice what he says. I was so zealous as for zeal, a persecutor of the church, which means, which means, if you trace my history, I was so zealous about the things of God that if anybody countered what I believe, I was responsible for killing them. Man, talking about bragging rights. Talk about bragging rights. And then he says here, as to righteousness, check my record. Blameless. I mean, this is bold because this is almost like saying, I ain't never sinned. (laughs) That's some crazy stuff. Are you with me? But but I want you to hear what Paul is saying, right? He says, blameless. And if he said, um, as for zeal, persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, he says, one under the law, and he says, blameless. Now, the reason I want to be cautious about not putting confidence in fleshly accomplishment is that you and I need to understand that this world is not our home. Does anybody know that this morning? Now, now please don't. I, I want you to hear balance, and I don't want you to hear skew. So what I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying don't go to school. I'm not saying don't advance yourself on the job. I'm not saying don't advance in your career. I'm not saying don't make a better life for yourself. But what I am saying is don't let those things define who you are. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't know about you, but I've seen people that before you see them coming, you find out who they are. Y'all know anybody like that? I mean, you hear about their past, you hear about their accomplishment, you hear about everything that they've done, and because they got a little promotion, you better bow to me. You know, in a military situation, you ought to salute me, you ought to do something. Don't let what you do define who you are. Oh, come on, say amen. Come on, yeah. Y'all help me out real quick. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't care what you did. I just need to know who you are. Yeah, yeah, come on, tell the other neighbor. Say, other neighbor, I don't care what you did. <laughs> I need to know who you are. Because you got a whole lot of folk that did a whole lot of things that ain't nothing. Are you hearing me? That, that we can't deal with them, we can't process them. So hear me carefully. Believers, in, especially people of God, are cautioned not to hang out in your worldly accomplishment, okay? Now, if we're not to hang out in our worldly accomplishment, What then really is the goal? So here's this. I want us to take a moment with this. So to avoid putting confidence in the flesh, the believer then must be willing to sacrifice anything that results in worldly gain, okay, while, and notice the terms I'm using, making it their goal to become like Christ, okay? Notice the words very, very carefully, okay? That, that the believer um, must be willing to sacrifice anything that resides, that, that results in worldly gain while making it their goal to become like Christ. Notice the words that I'm using because when we get to caution, it'll, it'll make a little more sense to you. So look with me at verse 7. Here's what Paul says. He picks up by saying now, um, but whatever gain I had, he says, I counted at loss, as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. For his sake, I had suffered the loss of all things and count them, and he used this word, 
as rubbish or as trash or as dung in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness uh, from God that depends on faith. Okay? Now let me read verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his suffering and become like him in his death, that by any means possible, come on, say any means possible, I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Now here's what Paul is saying. Let's kind of talk about this real quick. I'm going to move quick. Whatever I thought was profitable, my degrees, my life's accomplishment, my finances, my, my everything, my home, my job, my cars, my, my everything that I had, he says, I counted it as loss that I may gain Christ. Very, very important statement. I want you all to hear me say balance here, okay, because I'm not telling you go home and quit your job and do all this stuff and follow Christ, but I want you to talk, hear me say priority. Come on, y'all. So, so he uses this interesting word, counted, and that word counted is written in what, in what grandma would refer to as the perfect tense, meaning that he didn't wait until the end of his Christian journey to start giving stuff up. The perfect tense says the moment he gave his life to Christ, he made the switch. And then he continued making the switch every day so he may gain Christ. It happened at his conversion on the Damascus Road. That's what counted me. It happened then. And then every day he says, I die daily. I die daily. I die daily. I die daily. I crucify the flesh that I may gain Christ. I crucify the flesh that I may gain Christ. I crucify the flesh that I... Every day that was his journey. Okay? So he says, I count everything I had as lost. And he uses this interesting word. I, I count them as rubbish. Some of your translation says dung. Here's what he says. Um, the literal translation of that word word could mean that I count everything I had as dog food. I like that because remember he says, beware of the who? Yeah. So here's what he says. That's the kind of stuff that feeds dogs. <laughs> People who glory in fleshly accomplishment. That's the kind of stuff that feeds them. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. He says, I count all that stuff as dog food. In other words, since I'm not a dog, I don't need that to survive. Come on, y'all. Talk to me this morning. Yeah. But, 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 but what, there, there's, a, there's a subtle nuance in the text that people who glory in worldly accomplishment need that to survive. You take the glory away from them. They don't know how to make it, right? So Paul says, I count all that stuff as dung. And he uses this word that I may gain Christ, I may know Christ. Oh my gosh. That, that, that's an interesting, interesting Greek word because that word literally means, it, it has some, some, some sexual nuances with it, which literally means I want to be intimate with Christ. I want to I wanna know him. I want to see him. I want to constantly be in the inner chamber with him. I want to constantly be in the holy of holies with him. So my press is not the world or its accomplishments. My press, he says, is Jesus. Oh, I wish I had somebody here like that this morning, that that's their press. He says, my press, my press, my press is to be like Christ. So I give it all up. So here's what he says. Here's what he says. Um... I want to know him. And then in verse 10, he says, I want to know the power of his resurrection. Okay? Here's what he's saying about that. This is what I want to know about the resurrection of God. The same God that raised Jesus from the dead. I want that same God to be in me. So that the same power that Jesus has to walk in life, I want that same power to reside in me. And here's the hint that he's saying that he's not explicitly saying, you can't glory in worldly accomplishment and have that kind of power in you. Come on now. You got to give something up to get what God has in store for you. So I want to know him just like that. In the power of his resurrection, he says, I want to share in his suffering. And then he says, I want to become like him in his death. Oh my gosh. Let, let, me, let me tell y'all what that means. Let me tell you what that means. He said, 
if Jesus could go to the grave, obeying God and die, and then God raised him to a new life, I want to be like that. And here's what that means. Don't, don't just be so spiritual about it. When Jesus died, notice when he rose from the grave, he said to Mary when she saw him in the garden, don't touch me, woman, because I have a new body. So Paul's saying, I really want to get there. Let me tell you what that looks like for me. I want to be able to, to be like him in my death. So a, death of, a life of sin, I want to be able to die to that so I can be raised to a new life. Here's what that means. If I have a pornographic addiction, I want to be able to die to that and live to something new. Come on now. If I have a drinking problem, I want to be able to die to that and I want to raise to something new. If I have a wife abuse problem, I want to be able to die to that and I want to live. Y'all not hearing me this morning. Come on now. If I have a gambling problem, I want to be able to die to that and I want to live to new lessons in Christ. Whatever it is that has me plagued right now, I want to be like Christ and die to it and walk in the power of his resurrection. Here's what that means. I got power now to say no to stuff. I have power now to say no to weaknesses. Come on, do I have any witnesses here? I have power to say no to things that are plaguing me, but I can't get there if I'm glorying in worldly accomplishments. My goal is to be like Christ. My goal is to live like Christ in the world, but not of it. Are you with me? Obeying daddy's word and doing everything that my daddy is calling me to be. And then he says, I like this, how he ended this, that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Here's what that says. Such that when this is all said and done, and Jesus comes back, I want to be where Jesus is. Come on, is anybody here? Is it just me that want to be there, y'all? Don't fool me now. Anybody here want to be where Jesus is? Come on, say it, man. Don't worry about who's sitting next to you. I want to be where Jesus is. But what he's really trying to hint, if your focus is the world and not the things of God, you're creating your own stumbling blocks. Does that make sense? Okay, so the goal is not to, the, 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 it's not to, to glory in worldly accomplishments, it's to press to be like Christ. So I need to make Christ my goal. Repeat out of me, say self. self. I must make Christ my goal. Christ my goal. One more time, say self. self. I, must Christ my I must make Christ my goal. Now look at the third thing and I'm almost done. So in sacrificing all to gain Christ, the believer must understand that the goal consists of a continual trajectory towards Christ. It is not an earthly accomplishment. Let me, English. Doesn't matter how long you've been saved. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you got it. It's a journey. Oh, I need somebody to say it's a journey. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. It's, 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 yeah, I want y'all to, let me, let me read that again, because I really like the way that sounds. In sacrificing all to gain Christ, the believer must understand that the goal consists of a continual trajectory toward Christ. It is not an earthly accomplishment. So what this looks like is this, is that I give my life to Christ here, okay, and I want to be like him, so I keep walking, and I'm 30, and I keep walking, and 40, I keep walking, 50, I keep walking, 60, I keep walking, 70, I keep walking, 80, I keep walking, 90, I keep walking, ain't none of y'all gonna make 100, and 90, I keep walking. <laughs> what I see in church, people get saved, and two weeks later, oh, I'm there. Oh, don't act like you don't know nobody like that. Because here's what that looks like. You still doing that? You still sinning? You ought to be like me. As if they're perfect. Oh, come on, talk to me this morning. As they've already made it to the end. It is a trajectory. And this message today is about not stopping the walk. Ah, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had. I wish I had. Let me read. Let me read. Let me read. Let me, let me read. So here's what he says, verse 19, I mean, verse 12. So my goal, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. Teleos is the Greek word, 
And what that means, I'm not done yet. I'm not complete. My goal is to be like Christ. Let the record reflect, I'm not done yet. Man, what a strong opening statement. So here's what I do. I press on to make it my own, okay, to make the goal my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Oh, oh, oh. I could stop preaching right there and do a four-part series on this. So here's the thing that he's really trying to say. The reason I'm trying to press on is because I want to get to where Jesus is. And the striking thing about me trying to get to where Jesus is, spiritually, Jesus already got me to the end. Oh, y'all, y'all, not, y'all not getting this. But I kind of keep walking so the flesh can catch up to where the I wish I had somebody in here can catch up to where the spirit is. So, so I'm pressing to align my body, my flesh with my spirit because Jesus already has the spirit. So I got to keep walking so I can, I wish I had somebody in here so I can catch up to where Jesus is. Are you hearing me? I'm trying to get there. And the problem with a whole lot of us, we fool ourselves into thinking that the flesh is walking and it's already got all the spirit it needs and we stop and look down at others. Come on, turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better keep walking. (laughs) Come on, tell our neighbor, say, other neighbor, come on, say, you better keep walking. I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. So Paul says, Paul said, listen, I ain't there yet. But he says, I press. I press to make it my own. And I like verse 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have made it my own. But one thing I do. Come on, say one thing. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let me read this and I'll talk about it. Let those of us who are mature, I like that, think this way. Lord, have mercy. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Say forget. Forget. Y'all talk to me. Come on, say forget Forget. and press. press. Say it again. Say forget. Forget. And press. One more time. Say forget Forget. and press. press. Here's what that looks like. And I want you to visualize, have two images with you. Uh, 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 uh. A hunter that's hunting, and all he's doing is pursuing the game. And he doesn't stop until he catches the game. Another imagery that could fit here is that of the Grecian games. They're running a race. And, and so here's what they're doing. The first time around the track, they might have hit a pothole or they might have hit a certain thing. But because they fall doesn't mean that they quit. They get up and they almost forget about the fall. But the exercise caution for the next time around, they know exactly where the hole is. Okay? So he, here's what he's trying to let me, let me say it in English a different way. Is that I have to forget all my worldly accomplishments And then I realize that the goal is Christ, not the worldly accomplishments, and I press towards the goal. So I run, and I like that because he says I do one thing. So here's what the one thing, forgetting and pressing, okay? And and he puts those two, he calls those two participles as one thing, meaning that I've got to leave behind all the worldly stuff and continually remind myself that the goal is Christ. Are you with me? And, and, and the caution that's being exercised is this. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you've already made it. Amen. Oh, come on, talk to me this morning. Excuse the phrase, but I can't stand folk that think that they're all that. They're whole year. Come on now. And, and, and that they're sinless and that they're perfect. I'm not one of them. I'm trying to get to where Jesus is. So every day I wake up, I've got to forget yesterday and press to tomorrow. Come on, I want you to hear me. The next day I wake up, i got to forget yesterday and press into tomorrow. Because here's the problem. If all I do is look into my yesterday, I will never make progress into my tomorrow. Are you hearing me? 
and here's how for, man, I got this degree and I got that. Well, heck, you got that yesterday. What you gonna get tomorrow? Are you hearing me? I own this house and I own that. Well, heck, you got that yesterday. What you gonna get tomorrow? At some point, we need to say the goal is Christ and I'm not there yet. So I press, I press, I press, I press, I press. So it's a continual trajectory. It's a continual trajectory. I step today, but I got to step tomorrow. Tomorrow I step, I got to step tomorrow's tomorrow's. And the next day, it's a step. Come on. And the next day, come on, are you hearing me? And the next day is a step. But I, I can only do that by forgetting yesterday and reaching into tomorrow. And I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this verse right here where it says, where he says here, let me find it. He says here, verse 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And he said, let those of us who are mature think this way, okay? Here's what that upward, come on, say upward call. Upward call. Say it again, say upward call. Hold on. I need everybody to say that. Come on, say upward call. upward call. Let me tell you what Paul is saying. See, Paul, Paul was used to probably seeing these Grecians games. And here's what happened is that the, the, the Grecian Olympic back in the day would happen, and, 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 and the winner of the race, at the end of the games, the, the announcer or the heralder would stand in the booth, and what they would do is they would call the winner up to the platform. And then when he got to the platform, they would announce his name, his daddy's name, and his place of origin. And what I like about that, because Paul is saying, he's saying this, in the race, my name isn't called yet until I make it to the end. And I have to make it to the end because when I get to the end, it's proof of who my daddy really is. Come on, I want y'all to hear me. And it's also proof of where I'm really from because the earth is not my home. I'm in the race. So when I get to the end, daddy's going to call my name to come up. Come on. And he's going to tell me I'm not a citizen of this earth. I'm a child of his. Are you, come on. Is this making sense? The goal is to get to where Jesus is, not earth. So here's the last thing I want y'all to get and then I'm done. Don't give up while fighting to become like Christ. Don't, don't, don't give up. Let, let me help you. There, they're going to talk about you. Don't give up. Annette, they're going to call you some names. Don't, yeah, don't give up. You kind of get it? Bernard, they're going to say crazy things about you. Don't. Jackie, you ain't heard nothing yet. Don't. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Annie, you ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. But, but don't. Come on, y'all. Because understand with me. You see, if you're focusing on worldly accomplishment, you'll get distracted and you'll give up. Amen. But if the goal is Christ, I wish I had somebody in here. Come on. You won't give up while pursuing him because you'll forget what's behind and you'll press to what's ahead. Listen, I'm in pastoral ministry. I've been called everything but a child of God. I have to wake up the next day and forget what's behind. And come on, y'all. In your marriage, you're going to have difficulties. You cannot dwell on what happened yesterday. You've got to forget what's behind and press. Oh, come on. In your job, you're going to get a bad appraisal. You can't go to work every day with that kind of a mindset because that's not the goal. Life is going to happen to you. Forget what's behind and reach forward and don't give up while fighting to become like Christ. Press on. Oh, come on. Are you hearing me this morning? Press on. Oh, come on. Come on. Press on. Press on. Press on. Press on. Press on. Come on, Pastor Katani. Let me read. Let me read this last verse. Then we're going to stop. Look at verse 17. Brothers, join me. Join in imitating me. Come on, worship team. And keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have been even told and now tell you, even with tears, they've walked as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Some folk have walked away, he said, 
Their God is their belly, and their glory is their shame, with minds set on what? Earthly things. Look at 20. But our citizenship is where? In heaven. And from it we await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Look at chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for with joy, with my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Amen. Do not give up Amen. while fighting to become like Christ. Come on, y'all. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. No other way to say it. Don't give up. Don't give up. Bow your heads with me. Lord, you're wonderful. God, you're gracious. You're merciful. You're kind. We know our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion going around seeking whom he may devour. And Lord, he's going to try whatever he can to discourage us. Help us not give up in the fight, God. So we want to pray, Lord, a prayer of encouragement this morning. That should there be one here that's going through difficulties, that's going through challenges, that life is beating them down. Holy Spirit, draw them, God. I thank you for the encouragement this morning because there's times I want to give up. And if I feel that way, I know there are others here who feel that way. We press on towards the mark, God. We don't give up by fighting while fighting to become like Christ. So we give you praise, God. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen.